We have more news about the man who was killed in an FBI raid. As the story goes, he was making threats to Joe Biden, as well as many other government officials. The FBI sought to serve a search and arrest warrant. Something happened. We don't know exactly what. And this man ended up being killed in a shootout. Well, they say he was shot and killed. I don't think there's been any claims that he was shooting. But uh, this man is dead. It's a horrifying story. And the question is, is this escalation or do things like this happen from time to time? I don't know for sure. But last night we were talking about the prospects of (gasps) civil war. And the conversation was about whether or not people care enough. Reed Coverdale on the show said that he didn't think people cared all that much and that nobody would be interested in taking up a weapon. You know, my response to that was, well, actually, Phil Labonte said most conflicts throughout history, most wars were not fought by the majority. The majority never wanted the conflict. It's always a small minority that is seeking change or seeking to prevent change, something something to that effect. That may be the case. And then when it comes to the issue of taking up weapons, That may be, as I described it, akin to someone saying, if a war breaks out, is anyone really going to want to pick up a bow and arrow and a sword? It's an archaic method for winning a conflict. Today's conflict, I don't believe necessarily will be fought with physical weapons. I think it is a battle for your mind. It is a culture war. It is an information war. The way I've described it uh, in the past, if you went to Genghis Khan, Napoleon, Hitler, you know, name one of these uh, warlords and tyrants and told them that they could win a war without lifting a single finger. They could win a war without firing a single shot. They need only control the minds of the people. Would they do it? Of course they would. Why expend resources that you can save for other issues when you can just control the minds of people and make them worship you, support you, defend you, or cower in fear and do nothing to stop you? And that's where I think we are right now in the culture war. I think what we are going to see in terms of modern civil conflict is exactly what we're witnessing now with lying, cheating, stealing, and manipulation. However, there is a physical component to this. The FBI, we have new information coming out about how they were targeting Catholics. The Biden administration is weaponizing the DOJ against its political opponents. And so it may be that outside of the realms of the culture war, which contain most of the fighting into the realm of ideas, we are actually entering some kind of physical space which is worrying. And that is, you've got this guy on social media making these posts it's about all he's doing. If we didn't have social media, he wouldn't be saying anything. He'd maybe be saying stuff to his neighbors, but nobody would show up and nobody would care. In this instance, my assumption is this. This man made a bunch of very, very awful posts. He should never have made these. And uh, they're crimes. The FBI came to his house to arrest him for saying these things over and over again. Very messed up things. I'm willing to bet that he refused to surrender. And this is the result of an armed man telling the FBI to F off and you won't be able to arrest him. I'm willing to bet this man resisted arrest based on what we see now. Yesterday morning, apparently someone who lives in the area tweeted out a thread about their views of this. And I think that that thread is rather interesting to see what the neighbors thought of this man. The general idea was that this guy who was shot and killed He was 75 years old, 300 pounds, could barely walk and was no threat to anybody. So why did they need an FBI raid to bring him in? Well, I don't think there's an easy answer, but it could be as simple as armed man threatening president refuses to surrender. And then what do you think is going to happen? The question I have, did they go after anybody like this over Trump? A few people sort of. But never to this degree. I don't think we saw any stories where the DOJ went and killed people. But I'm not going to sit here and defend a guy who was issuing extreme threats, right? Don't do that. That is bad. What this man did has actually harmed our ability to win back in the best possible way. Uh, To win back in the best possible way, put that in quotes, not uh, that he harmed it in the best possible way. What I'm saying is the best outcome for all of us is that Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy, Donald Trump, I don't know, one of the three gets elected and follows through on what they said they want to do. Then we get a cleaning up of the DOJ. We get firing of government employees and we can start to course correct this country. I don't think it is too far gone where it's going to fall into absolute chaos and collapse and conflict. The best case scenario for all of us is, to be honest, I think Trump winning, Trump firing everybody not literally everybody, but Trump firing tons of these corrupt individuals, cleaning up the DOJ, and then we're back on track as a country. Our worst case scenario is 
Joe Biden weaponizing the DOJ and arresting people, which will lead to physical conflict. It's the stupidest thing imaginable. But I have to say, I mean, if Donald Trump were to get in office and start arresting people, which I think pro- probably should, it may also uh, end up with, with, with serious conflict. So I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers. But let's read this news story. I want to give you updates on, on where we're at, because this seems to be it seems to be a dramatic escalation. Perhaps the reality of the story is that sometimes people post stupid things on the Internet. We've seen crazy stories before. This is not the first. So to call it escalation, I don't know that it's fair. I think it will lead to escalation considering the contextual circumstances in today's news. But I got this story. Just, I'll show you real quick from 2016. A man tried to grab a gun in 2016. This is before Trump was elected. He tried to grab a gun threatening Donald Trump. He was arrested for it. People wanting to cause serious harm. This has been going on for seven years. It's seven years. Seven years ago, this guy did this. Seven. Isn't that crazy? So where we're at now, I'm not surprised. And I'm not going to act like some random dude in Provo, Utah, posting things on the Internet is worse than a guy trying to grab a gun at a Trump rally. So I don't want to say that this is necessarily escalation. It's actually, you know, lesser. But what I think is where we are in the modern culture war with everyone on on edge, with Joe Biden arresting his political opponent, this will contribute to a a rapid, uh, it, it will contribute to an escalation in that it may not be the worst thing that's ever happened relative to conflict in this country, but it's a snowflake in the avalanche. You know, back in 2016, consider that to be a snowball rolling down a hill, the man trying to grab the weapon. Dangerous. It gets, it's, you know, the snowball gets very, very large, slams into the wall and you go, whoa, that was, that was close. What we're seeing now may not be as serious as that snowball rolling down the hill, but it is a component of the avalanche we are currently watching, which could lead to very, very serious consequences for this country. The New York Times reports an FBI agent on Wednesday fatally shot a man in Provo, Utah, who officials said was armed and had threatened to assassinate President Biden just hours before the president was scheduled to speak in Salt Lake City. Craig Robertson, 75, was also charged with threatening to shoot other officials, including Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan DA who went to uh, who has charged Trump, uh, uh, as well as others. The shooting comes at a moment of intense polarization in American politics. The three indictments of former President Donald J. Trump have offered fodder for supporters and allies who have seized on his mounting legal peril to fan a narrative of a Justice Department weaponized against him and bent on derailing the Republican frontrunner's campaign to retake the White House. And that's exactly what it is. Let's be real. We've got whistleblowers saying that Hunter Biden was given protection, that the Bidens are protected. So when you have a DOJ ignoring Hunter Biden's obvious criminal activities, speeding down the road, doing crack in his car, things like that, not necessarily at the same time, But, you know, when you've got evidence of illicit business deals and the Democrats do not care, but they will weaponize the DOJ against Donald Trump. I'll make it plain as day for you, New York Times. There is now talk of the grand jury that indicted Trump reconvening. They've already reconvened and they're going to go after Trump's lawyers. Okay, you will never convince me that is normal and that is just Trump's lawyers. He was getting advice from counsel. And what did the DOJ do? They said these are co-conspirators. If they indict these individuals, the game is on. You know, this is what I've been saying. A lot of people have asked about whether or not uh, or or they've asked the question, when is the time to flee? There have been a lot of people who have said, no, 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 no. Don't ever flee. You've got to stay and protect this country. There's a question about when people decided to flee other countries when things were getting bad. And this is my my position. If the DOJ indicts the lawyers of Donald Trump, that's it. I I, I genuinely believe that if the DOJ, in, uh, if the grand jury indicts Trump's lawyers, this country is uh, outright right there. I say civil war. We, you, many people have argued when will it start? I mean, look, when the, when the government sends armed men to arrest lawyers for advising someone, legal advice is constitutionally protected. Gloves are off. That's it. They are now making moves of aggression against their political opponents. And, and, and you could argue like the fact that they're going after Donald Trump already insinuates this is happening. Fair point. Fair point. Grains of sand in a heap. Snowflakes in, a, in, an, in an avalanche. After they indict the lawyers, the next step is to indict advocates. 
And I believe one of the so, uh, so-called cons- uh, co-conspirators is a political consultant, literally just an advocate, someone who was ad- giving political advice. If they invite if that person may, is on the list, they could be indicted. The next step after that is going to be influencers, I suppose. How long until the DOJ starts saying that anyone who agreed with Trump and encouraged lawsuits and these actions was inciting people to engage in criminal activity? That's the next step. And, and some people might say, no, no, you know, we can't get to that point. Are you kidding? Lawyers giving legal counsel? That's way more protected than, than uh, someone speaking on the radio. You go on the radio and you literally incite to violence. You can go to jail and get arrested. You, you go on social media and you incite to violence and make threats. They will come and arrest you. As a lawyer, obviously you can't tell your clients to commit crimes. But when you're telling your client that he can file a legal challenge, and that is the basis for arresting your lawyers, the game's on. The system is broken. It's collapsed. And this is active conflict. Having agents of the government go and arrest dissidents. You're in revolution, baby. It's only civil war if people start fighting. Michael Tracy says, there has been no claim made that this individual fired on FBI agents, or even that he was armed at the time of the fatal altercation today. Apparently, a giant squad of militarized personnel was incapable of apprehending a 75-year-old man without gunning him down on his doorstep. But I, I do believe that he was said to be uh, armed. Officials said what he was armed. So. I, I, I just want to say, you know, in, in, in response to these uh, posts with respect to Michael Tracy, look, I don't think this is the kind of guy that surrenders peacefully. He may be immobile, elderly and morbidly obese, but he probably had a gun and said, you ain't coming in. You can't. You're not taking me. And they said, yes, we are. And they enforced that action against him. Now, this Twitter thread has gained some traction from Jay Whitebread. I believe he uh, is going to be appearing with Glenn Beck to break down what's going on. But he said, He tweeted this yesterday morning. The FBI just shot and killed an elderly brother in our ward. Financial clerk for years. Sweet guy. Full SWAT team. My wife is good friends with his neighbor. She and her five-year-old were terrorized. Wife went to check on her. His body is still laying in the street. My God, I can't believe this has happened. I'll get more details soon. This guy was a threat to no one. He was an elderly 300-pound guy who could barely walk with a cane. Took care of his disabled adult son. Liked to make furniture. My God, what is this country coming to? Neighbor says it was not the police, but FBI. What the ever loving F? How is an elderly man who can barely walk a threat to anyone? What the heck is going on? We absolutely need to get the word out on this. Does anyone have any journalist that will look into this? We need people to investigate. I can't imagine whatever this man did warranted a full FBI SWAT team and a battering ram at the crack of dawn. Now that is the question. Did they send in an FBI SWAT team with a battering ram? I'm going to go ahead and believe this guy's post over, say, the New York Times. Why? He posted this, posted this yesterday morning before there was breaking news as to what really happened. The story came out sometime, I think, in the afternoon. We started seeing reports about an FBI raid. And that's all they said, FBI raid. Before they reported that, we had a local who said they showed up with a SWAT team and a battering ram. So what happened? Did they bust his door down? You know, when Donald Trump received threats, what did we hear? People showed up, knocked on people's door and say, did you post this? What we're hearing now with this story is that they showed up with a SWAT team and a battering ram. I bet they busted in and this guy said, nope. Maybe this guy wasn't armed. If it really was a battering ram, this guy maybe was just running and they shot and killed him. The scary thing is we don't know. And the scary thing is no one's going to want uh, to give Biden's DOJ the benefit of the doubt. And so it's a very real possibility that this fat old man hobbled out of his door as they tried raiding it to arrest him because he dared. Well, he he committed crimes threatening the president. Don't do that. And he tried to flee. And maybe they just killed him. I don't trust the Biden DOJ. I would not be surprised to hear they busted the door down and just executed the guy. Because that's where we're currently at in this country. However, I do think there's a strong possibility considering this guy's posting history that, uh, He grabbed a weapon and said, no way. But who do we trust? The scary thing is, how do we even know this guy actually posted these things? What if someone makes a fake profile in your name and makes these posts and the FBI comes, busts your door down and kills you? What if the FBI makes the fake posts in your name, shows them to the world and says, look what he posted? Am I supposed to sit here and just say, well, that guy posted these things? Let me let me clarify. 
He's accused of posting these things. We can believe he did. But I don't think the government has the right to shoot and kill someone or raid their house unless they've proven it. And therein lies the serious question. Raiding someone's house, the crack of dawn with a battering ram and a SWAT team. At what in, in what at what point do they have to prove to the public this man actually did these things? It's a dangerous world, man. They go to a judge and say, look at these posts. He made them. The judge says, OK, do they need any kind of forensic evidence showing it was his IP address that did it? This is where we're at right now. I think on the face, a simple solution is probably this guy made these posts, so they decided to raid him. He said, no, they shoot and kill him. But there's a scary reality that the FBI can go to a judge and be like, oh, it looks real. And the judge can sign off on an armed SWAT raid. I think we're headed down dark paths and things are about to get really dangerous. One individual tweeted last night in response. He said, I knew Craig in real life for the past two or three years. I knew he loved guns. I knew he loved woodwork. He made bed frames and other furniture pieces. He was able to get around with the help of a cane. Sometimes he was, he put honery. I, I think he meant ornery because I'm like, I don't know. I've not, I'm not familiar with this word honery. And uh, uh, when you search for it, it's like, did you mean ornery? Ornery is, you know, agitated and, and, and angry. He says sometimes he was honery, like when he led a proje- project to complete a ramp for an elderly woman in the neighborhood. I knew he had a lot of guns. I know that isn't illegal. He made me really upset when we were building a ramp and I let him know he apologized for his angry outburst. Craig was a human. He was imperfect. I didn't run in his circles online. I didn't know that part of him. The Craig I knew I loved. I am deeply saddened by this violent tragedy. I, I say this. I, I say expect more. I say expect more. I don't want we, we certainly don't want that to happen. As I said, the best case scenario, we have a normal election. One of these Republicans wins and terminates fires these individuals from these offices and says no more of this corruption. Jim Jordan said they spied on parents speaking up at school board meetings. Yeah, they called them terrorists. They raided President Trump's home. They targeted traditional Catholics, Biden's DOJ. They said that parents who are concerned about sexual predators in schools were terrorists. Antifa, on the other hand, firebombing buildings, man. I don't see how this de-escalates. Anybody who's watched my segments over the past few years, think about the things we've talked about. Let's go back to 2018. I remember having these conversations about Antifa fighting Proud Boys, and I said, this leads to escalation. There's no situation where you end up with a Proud Boy being like, you know what? I was wrong about Antifa. And Antifa being like, come here, Proud Boy, and they hug. It's not going to happen. I had people telling me I was crazy to suggest this would escalate and that civil war was a possibility. Civil war, of course, not being my opinion, but as I often say, coming from security experts and articles published by The Hill and The Atlantic, I'm reading those and I'm being like, maybe they're right. And when I was told that I was crazy, the security state would never allow that conflict. I said, you don't understand. The conflict will reach the highest levels of government. It's not going to be this neutral arbiter of federal law in the federal government saying, oh, these left and right factions, oh, they're so bad. We're going to put a stop to their fighting. It is going to be Antifa in government being like, now we control the keys to power. It is going to be the leftist fringe ideology controlling the weapons. So where are we now? We're exactly there. Biden's DOJ basically taking actions on behest of far left extremists. You got a problem with a right wing guy who's armed? Well, before it was whinging leftists who would show up at their house and and threaten them. Now it is the is the brunt of the monopoly on power United States force coming to people's homes. We saw this story in Wisconsin I talked about the guy who had these far left extremists show up to his house and threaten him. The cops came and arrested him because he brandished a weapon in his own home up against a closed window. A violent mob that had set fire to a house twice before shows up to his house. He brandishes his gun in his own home with the window closed, but they can see it. The police come and arrest him. That's what happens. And this is what I see escalating. Biden's DOJ is going to go after tons of people. You think, you know, in, in 2018, I think it was 18, they banned a bunch of right-wing personalities knowing 
that these personalities helped Trump get elected in the meme wars. Posting things to help Trump get elected was bad, so they all got banned. That's not going to work this time around. Elon Musk controls X, formerly Twitter. Rumble exists, and these influencers are making comebacks. Alex Jones is now going to be working with Stephen Crowder on Mug Club and producing a show with him. I believe that's what they're doing, producing a show. They're coming back. Elon Musk running X, it's getting bigger. Their only option is going to be escalation. So what do I see happening in the next year? I do think it's strongly, uh, li- it's highly likely, very possible that the DOJ and DC will indict Trump's lawyers and a political consultant. A former State Department lawyer, Jeffrey Clark, may also face indictment. The next thing after that is going to be to indict personalities who supported Donald Trump under the argument that they were inciting violence. How many people cheered for January 6th? What did, what, did, what did Raskin do at the J6 hearings? It's all being lined up for you. These individuals who are calling for like a red wedding or whatever, they're going to say, you incited violence, you incited insurrection. I would not be surprised if we see Biden's DOJ. In fact, I think it's highly likely all of those people who cheered for Trump's calls for a protest will face criminal charges. Biden's going to say we won't tolerate insurrectionists in this country, people who advocated for insurrection. It's it's seditious conspiracy, yada, yada, yada. Oh, and people will make the argument First Amendment. But he doesn't care. You have a right to lawyers to give you advice. They clearly don't care. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they don't indict these lawyers. But even CNN said it seems like they're going to go after them. Tell me why you think this would not be the case. How many people made videos where they said, uh, I believe it was uh, uh, I can't remember who there's many people who are saying things like they were cheering for for January 6th. They were cheering for protest action. We know that many of the people who went into the Capitol building on January 6th did not know there was violence. There were there's multiple sides to this building. There was violence on one side, which was wrong. And there were peaceful protests and a rally on the other. The police opened the door, fanned people in. Those people are going to jail and prison. Some have been locked up without charge or trial. If you think that they are going to ignore the social media personalities and media personalities who championed the rallies and the protests on January 6th. They're going to ignore that, but they would arrest a guy who walked onto the grass. Brandon Strzok never entered the building, criminally charged. I met with someone recently. I met someone, I should say, not met with someone. We were out for dinner and I was approached by a fan who said that they had showed up hours later just saw people walking around, went up to the Capitol, looked around and then left for criminal charges. If they're willing to charge a person for simply being in D.C. and bumbling about confused, you think they won't charge the people who went on camera advocating for the rally on January 6th? I'm not saying anyone advocated directly for people to storm to the Capitol and get violent or anything. I'm saying they will argue that anyone who said to go to D.C. or to be at the protest, they will argue that was incitement to insurrection. That's the next that's that's the next big move. Sometime before the election next year, they're going to have to shut down anyone who supports Trump and advocates for this. And, and, and I've, I've felt this way for a while. That's why you'll see a lot of former Trump supporters just absolutely on on board with Ron DeSantis. I think there's a lot of people who are abs, who are directly advocating for serious action on, on, on January 6th or in D.C. at some point, who are terrified that Biden's DOJ is going to go after them. So they flipped and said, oh, I'm not for Trump. I'm, I'm for DeSantis. Why? I'm not saying DeSantis is a, a deep state plant or anything like that. I'm saying they're just speaking out against Trump because they know the Democrats despise Trump and Trump is the front runner. They're saying if the if the nominee is Trump, they won't support him. How many of these people were in D.C. on January 6th? How many of these people advocated for direct action on January 6th? All of a sudden now are like, oh, oh Trump's bad. Yeah, they're terrified. They're terrified the Biden DOJ is going to come after them. They lie, cheat and steal. Jamie Raskin tried claiming that my coverage of uh, Fox, you know, it was a Fox News article where Trump called for protest. That was incitement. That is the degree to which they are going to go after people. 
simply by saying Donald Trump has called for a protest. He said it's going to be wild. I agree. It probably will be wild. You know, I didn't go down there, but I would not be surprised to see extreme action taken by the Biden DOJ. The question then becomes, when does any person recognizing what what they're seeing in this country decide to GTFO? I think Donald Trump can win. And because I think he can win, I think we stay in this country. We advocate for cleaning up the DOJ, removing these corrupt and evil individuals who would target their political opponents. We seek we seek a political victory through the ballot box, which can be achieved through ballot harvesting and strategic electoral means, something that Republicans have lacked in the past several elections. But there are many people who say you can't win. You can't win. What's the point? The deep state's in control. And I'm like, then what are you doing here? If you think you are living under a repressive regime and you can't succeed, even if you try, El Salvador awaits, my friends. It's, it, they're doing wonderful things down there. You can leave. But I don't think we're at that point just yet. Maybe if in 2024 Trump loses, then the question is, can we even withstand another election? I don't know. But right now, I think it is truly possible. And the fact they're going after everyone so heavily proves they're scared they're going to lose and there will be accountability. As I often say, let's just wait and see. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.